24 hours of the Passion, 3 p.m. hour, Jesus is pierced with a soldier's lance and disposed from the cross. Preparation before each hour. O oh my Lord Jesus Christ, prostrate in your divine presence, I implore your most loving heart to admit me to the sorrowful meditation of the 24 hours in which, for love of us, you wanted to suffer so much in your adorable body and in your most holy soul unto death on the cross. Oh, please, give me help, grace, love, deep compassion and understanding of your sufferings as I now meditate this hour. And for those which I cannot meditate, I offer you my, my will to meditate them, and I willingly intend to meditate them in all the hours in which I have to apply myself to my duties or sleep. Accept, O merciful Lord, my loving intention, and let it be beneficial for me and for all, as if I effectively and in a saintly way accomplished what I wished to practice. Meanwhile, I give you thanks, O my Jesus, for calling me to union with you by means of prayer. And to please you more, I take your thoughts, your tongue, your heart, and with this I intend to pray, fusing all of myself in your will and in your love, and stretching out my arms to hug you, I place my head on your heart, and I begin. O oh my Jesus, you have already died. Since I abide in your heart, already I begin to enjoy the copious fruits of your redemption. Even the most incredulous souls reverently bow before you while beating their breast. What they failed to do before your body while you were alive, they now do before your body while you are dead. All nature is shaken. The sun darkens, the earth quakes. All the elements are affected and, it seems, they partake in your most sorrowful death. The angels enraptured with loving adoration descend from heaven in thousands to adore, acknowledge and confirm you as the true God. O oh my Jesus, I join my adoration to theirs and I offer you my gratitude and all the love of this poor heart of mine. But I see that your love is not satisfied. To give us more convincing sign of your love, you allow a soldier to approach you and, with the trust of a lance, pierce your heart, thereby causing the last drops of blood and water still contained in your heart to gush forth. O oh Jesus, will you not allow this lance also to wound my heart? Indeed, you shall. As this is the lance that will wound my desires, my thoughts, my heartbeats and my will, and it will bequeath to me your will, your thoughts and your entire life of love and self-immolation. Heart of my beloved Jesus, pierced with a lance, I beseech you to purify all souls and to grant refuge to all hearts and rest to all the weary. From the pierced side, you make your delightful spouse, the church, emerge. In her are contained 
the sacraments and the life of the souls. And I, along with our most holy mother, whose heart is bitterly wounded, make reparation for the offences, the abuses and the profanations that are made against your holy church. By virtue of this wound and for the love of Mary, our sweetest mother, I entreat you to enclose all souls in your most beloved heart and to protect, defend and illuminate the pastors of your church. O oh my Jesus, after your most harrowing and sorrowful death, I do not believe I should be free to live my own life. Rather, I ought to rediscover my life in your wounded heart. And all that which I must do, I shall always do by drawing grace from this sacred heart of yours. I will no longer give life to my own thoughts. Should my own thoughts demand life, I will draw such life from your thoughts. No longer will I give life to my own will. Should my own will demand life, I will draw such life from your most holy will. No longer will I give life to my own love. Should my own love demand life, I will draw such life from your love. O oh my Jesus, your entire will is mine. Such is your will, and therefore it is also my will. O oh my Jesus, in this you offer us the last proof of your love. Your heart is pierced, and nothing more remains that you could possibly do for us. And behold, they are already preparing to take you down from the cross. So I effuse myself completely in you. Accompany your dear disciples who have left their places to come here to remove the nails from your most sacred feet. And as I remove the nails from your feet with them, I beseech you to nail my entire being to you. Jesus, after they have disposed you from the cross, the first one to receive you into her lap is your sorrowful mother. And within her arms, your pierced head gently rests. Oh, sweet mother, do not refuse my company, but, but grant that with you I too may offer my beloved Jesus my last respects. My sweetest mother, it is true that in reverently touching my beloved Jesus you surpass me in love and gentleness, but I will strive to imitate you in the best possible way to please adorable Jesus in everything. Therefore, I unite my adoration to your profound adoration and entreat you to fuse my hands within your most blessed hands that I may extract the thorns that surround his head. Heavenly Mother, your hands now approach the eyes of my beloved Jesus, who once gave light to the whole world, but which are now closed and lifeless. You remove from his eyes the clotted blood. O oh, Mother, I unite myself to you with profound adoration. Together, let us kiss his eyes. I now see the ears of my beloved Jesus drenched in blood, swollen and bruised from the blows and lacerated from the thorns. O oh Mother, let us fuse our adoration in Jesus' ears that can no longer hear and that suffered so much as to beckon to God the many souls that are deaf to the voice of grace 
and that have become obstinate. O oh, sweet mother, I behold your sorrowful face covered with tears as you gaze upon the adorable face of Jesus. I unite my sorrow to yours. Together let us remove the mud and the spittle from his face that men have so disfigured and let us adore this face of the divine majesty that enraptures heaven and earth but which no longer gives any sign of life. O oh, sweet mother, together let us kiss his mouth, that divine mouth that attracted to his heart so many souls with the gracefulness of his word. Mother, with your own mouth I desire to kiss these bloodied and bruised lips. I profoundly adore them. O oh, sweet mother, I wish to join you in kissing over and over again the adorable body of my beloved Jesus, completely reduced to one gaping wound. I fuse my hands in yours to restore those pieces of tattered flesh that hang from him. I profoundly adore him. O oh, sweet mother, let us kiss Jesus' creative hands that accomplished for us so many miracles but are now pierced through, contorted and already cold and rigid from death. Let us enclose within these most sacred wounds the destiny of all souls so that Jesus in resurrecting may find then placed here by you and me, and in this way no soul shall be lost. O oh, Mother, in the name of all and on behalf of all, let us together adore these deep wounds of Jesus. O oh, Heavenly Mother, I see you approach poor Jesus' feet to kiss them. How heart-wrenching these wounds are. The nails have removed from his feet part of the skin and flesh. The weight of his most sacred body has horribly crushed them. Together, let us kiss and adore Jesus' feet so that as souls walk, they may feel the footsteps of Jesus closely following them and may not dare to offend him. O oh, sweet mother, I see that you turn your gaze toward the heart of your adorable Jesus. What should we do within this heart of his? You will teach me, mother. You will bury me within this heart and roll back the stone to enclose me within it. You will deposit my heart and my life in his heart, where I will remain hidden for eternity. Mother, grant me your love so that I may truly love Jesus. Grant me your sorrow so that I may intercede for all souls and make reparation for all offences that will be made against his heart. And while you are burying Jesus, remember, O oh Mother, that with your own hands I want you to bury me along with him so that I may resurrect with him and all that is, is his. And now, my sweet mother, I wish to tell you something. I wholly unite myself with your sorrows and completely effuse this poor heart of mine in yours to reunite the heartbeats, the desires and the lives of all souls and I wish to bring them all to you transformed into acts of compassion and love. 
I unite myself with the extreme sorrow you endure in seeing Jesus dead, crowned with thorns, and his lifeless body tortured from the scourges and the nails. On seeing those eyes that gaze at you no more, those ears that hear you no more, the mouth that speaks to you no more, on seeing those hands that embrace you no more, those feet that once never left your side and from far away always followed your steps. I wish to offer you Jesus' own heart, overflowing with love and the compassion you deserve and assuage your most bitter sorrows. Reflections and Practices by Saint Hannibal de Francia After his death, Jesus wanted to be wounded with a lance for love of us. And do we let ourselves be wounded in everything for love of Jesus? Or do we rather let ourselves be wounded by the love of creatures, pleasures and self-love? Interior aridity and coldness and interior and external humiliations are also wounds that the Lord communicates to our souls. If we do not accept these from the hands of God, we then wound ourselves and our wounds increase our passions, our weakness, our self-love, in a word, the whole gamut of evils we experience. On the other hand, if we accept these as wounds given to us by the hand of Jesus, he will place his love, his virtues and his likeness in these very wounds of ours, which will make us worthy of his divine kisses, his caresses and all the designs of his divine love. These wounds will be continuous voices that call upon him to compel him to dwell within us continuously. O oh my Jesus, may your lance be my guard to defend me from the wounds of others. Jesus allows himself to be disposed from the cross into the arms of his mother. Do we deposit all of our fears, doubts and anxieties in the arms of our mother? Jesus rested on the lap of his mother who partook of his divine nature. Do we let Jesus rest on our lap by casting away our fears and worries? Let us all pray. Sweet Mother, with your maternal hands remove from my heart everything that keeps Jesus from taking up his rest in me. Thanksgiving after each hour. My beloved Jesus, you have called me in this hour of your passion to keep you company and I have come. With the most touching and eloquent words, I seem to hear you praying, offering reparation, suffering and pleading in anguish and sorrow for the salvation of souls. I tried to follow you in everything. Now I owe you my heartfelt thank you and I bless you. Yes, O oh Jesus, I repeat my thank you thousands and thousands of times. And I bless you for all that you have done and suffered for me and for everyone. I thank you and I bless you for every drop of blood you shed. I thank you for every breath, heartbeat and step. I thank you for all the words, glances, afflictions and affronts you lovingly endured. For everything you did, O oh Jesus, I offer you my thank you and I bless you. O oh my dear Jesus, let my soul send forth a continuous flow of thanksgivings and blessings. May they draw down on all of us the flow of your blessings and graces. O oh, my sweet Jesus, press me to your heart and, with your most sacred hands, mark every particle of my being with your, I bless you, so that my being may send forth a continuous hymn of blessings to you.